All right, thumbs up. I like seeing that. Well, um, it's a it's quite a world we're living in, isn't it? Yeah. We're living in the in the end times, in the last days, and it's not a mistake that you're here. It feels like it sometimes, doesn't it? But it, it's it, it's God didn't make a mistake in calling you. It sometimes it does get weary, but uh, yeah, don't grow weary. But yeah. but you know the Lord is with us, and and He'll see us through all of these things. You know we don't preach a gloom and doom message. We actually preach the ultimate message. You think about that. I mean, yes. Matthew 24, I've got it. I opened up the Bible in Matthew 24. There's a lot of gloom and doom there. But there's also God's promises. And what God is doing in the body of Christ is so enormous. I mean, uh, this is, this is uh, transformative to say the least. I mean, you know, before... Before uh, God restored the earth and created Adam and Eve, the angels ruled the earth. Uh, Ray talked about it Wednesday night. I, I'm looking forward to hearing it, but we talked on the phone and about the archons, the principalities, the, the ones who were here first. And they had, they had authority and they have authority. You know, Satan usurped the, the authority, the dominion that God gave to Adam. And this is the mess we're in. But Jesus came to reverse that, to undo the works that the devil has done. And here we are in the last days. And uh, whereas, yeah, a lot of ministries do uh, preach a lot about gloom and doom. And there is a lot of gloom and doom. I mean, it says in Isaiah... It says that, uh, that darkness would cover the earth and dense darkness all people. And, you know, we deal with it every day. You know, when you're born into it and it kind of gradually gets slower, uh, gets uh, worse, uh, Satan does it so gradually, you know, this the boiling frog thing, that maybe you don't realize it sometimes, that maybe you take a step back from your life or see it from a bird's eye view, uh, dense darkness is covering the earth now. You don't have to wait for it. We're, we're in the end times now. And people are seeing it. And, you know, the thing that I've been seeing is on the internet, I, I, I watch a lot of things on the internet um, to keep up with it all, you know. And the thing that I see, I think, is happening is that the, the enemy is being found out. You know, they, they found out what they did to us four years ago was a huge manipulation. Um, uh, you know, they're finding out about fiat currency. They're finding out about you know, the military industrial complex. I mean, every they're finding out about Big Pharma. They're finding out about Big Agra. Uh, you know, most of the food that's in your grocery stores now is, is ultra-processed food. Now, I saw one thing where it takes five apples to get the same uh, nutrients that you got from one apple in 1948. Well, this is what big agriculture does. It's all about the bottom line and, you know, they deplete the, oil, the soil and all that kind of thing. And, but, but my point being is all these things are being found out. And so, you know, when you, when you corner the beast, um, don't be surprised if something big happens. You, know, you corner a wild animal, you better be ready to... Uh, take cover <laughs> and this is this is what I'm seeing me and Jim were talking about on the way up here is I'm asking what are you saying he, he sees it too easy you know something big has to happen I mean either either that or these people are going to be found out and and there'll be pitchforks and 
and um, torches, and they're not going to let that happen. Uh, you know, they're not going to lose as far as they're concerned. Oh, they're going to lose. You know, the Bible says they're doomed to pass away. But, um, yeah, let's look at that in Psalm 73. You know, that's, that's a good thing to read. And my point being, you know, is that yes, there is gloom and doom, but the, the message that Jesus gave us for the end times isn't a message of gloom and doom. It's a message of victory. You know, Jesus died on the cross so that we could be, become new, creatures, cre, new creatures in Christ Jesus and begin the, the process of transformation to, put, to the point where we would be like Him. And that doesn't mean we replace God. No, He's the firstborn among many brethren. It says there in Romans chapter 8. But that right there of being created into the image of Jesus that we might share inwardly His likeness, uh, that is so much bigger than any of us have imagined yet. It's huge. Uh, you know, the archons are going to be cast out. They're going to be put in the penitentiary. I mean, if Satan is, surely they are. And um, the earth is going to be ruled by Jesus and his kings. He's the king of kings and the Lord of Lords. And, you know, in Psalm 73, uh, well, let's just read it. Uh, Truly God is good to Israel, even those who are upright and pure in heart. But as for me, my feet are almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious of the foolish and arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. I mean, this is what drives the world. I mean, you know, my, my brother came and visited this week. And we did some things together on his truck. We repaired his truck and everything. But uh, he's really into sports and things like that. And, you know, we, me and Jim, we watch it with him, you know. And he, he's asking us, you know, have you ever seen them this and that? And Jim and I look at each other and go, no, this is the first hockey game we've seen all year. We don't watch this kind of stuff. But in that world, I mean, it's all about the dollars. It's all about millionaires and entertainment and, you know, and it's, it, all that stuff is vanishing. It, it's vanity. It's, it's going to pass away. And the, they make such a big deal about dribbling a basketball. I mean, no doubt the, the, they can dribble a basketball better than me, but really in the big scheme of things, so what? <laughs> you know what I mean? We're at the end of the age, folks. Who cares? <laughs> uh for they suffer no violent pangs in their death, but their strength is firm. Yeah, I guess when you're taking adrenochrome, but anyway. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they smitten and plagued like other men. Therefore, pride is about their necks like a chain. Violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness, and they have more than heart could wish. And the imaginations of their minds overflow. They scoff and wickedly utter oppression. They speak loftily and set their mouths against and speak down from heaven. And their tongues swagger through the earth. Therefore, God's people return here and the waters of a full cup are drained by them. And they say, how does God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? You know, he says there'd be scoffers in the last days with scoffing. Behold, there, uh, these are the ungodly who prosper and are at ease in the world. They increase in riches. Surely then in vain have I cleansed my heart and washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long have 
I have been smitten and plagued and chastened every morning. Had I spoken thus, I would have been untrue and dealt treacherously against the generation of your children. And when I considered how to understand this, it was too great an effort for me and too painful until I went into the sanctuary of God. And then I understood their end. You know, when you go into God's sanctuary and you get in His Word and you see what the Word says about all that, you know, I mean, history bears it out. Uh, uh, everyone in every generation reaps what they sow. I mean, nobody has ever gotten away with anything, but generation after generation, mankind tries to get away being... Uh, scoffing at God and doing it their way. But when you go into the Word and you read God's prophetic Word, you know, you have the prophetic Word firmer still and you'll do better, better, uh, well to listen uh, to it as, to, to, as a light in a dim, squalid, dark place, right? Um, when you go in there and you see it, you see, wow. For you do set, uh, until I went to the sanctuary and I understood their end, you do set the wicked in slippery places and you cast them down to ruin and destruction. And they are utterly consumed with terrors in a moment, it says there. As a dream, when one awakens, so, O oh Lord, when you rouse yourself, you will despise their outward show from for my heart was grieved and embittered in a state of ferment, and I was pricked in my heart. So foolish, stupid, and brutish was I, and, er and ignorant. I was like a beast before you. See, we're all that way in the natural. That's just the way we are. I mean, we've, lo we've looked at all the rich people in the world. We, we see all that stuff on TV and all the pleasantries of... And you're like, wow, you know, and you're, man, uh, we're trying to pay our bills this week, <laughs> you know, uh, wow, are we going to meet it this week or are we going to fall short? No, it says we're not. It says we're not going to be, he said he won't leave us or forsake us and he'd supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. But sometimes it looks like they have it so easy. But really, if you were around those people and you saw their lives, it's not so easy. Usually there's a lot of tragedy in their lives. You see that a lot amongst wealthy people. There's a lot of tragedy. Nevertheless, I'm continually with you. You do hold my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel and afterward receive me to honor and glory. Let me say something about this. Um, you know, I, and I, I said a little bit of this last week, and I'll say it again. Often, Ray and I will bring out error in the body of Christ. I probably talk about it more than he does. We're not against the body of Christ. <laughs> We want the body of Christ to, to have the best that God has to offer. But when you embrace error and you think it's true, you know, Jesus saying, if the light in you is darkness, how dense is that darkness? If you think it's right and you order your life by something that's not true, you know, he, he, he says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. And there's a lot, we have a lot of leaven in the body of Christ. And when we bring it out, and like I say, probably me more than Ray, uh, we're, not, we're not just being critical of the body of Christ and, and lifting ourselves above them. No, we're trying to go, hey, look, hyper grace, that teaching is just wrong. You know, it, it's going to lead you in a wrong place. You know, the prosperity message, hey, I would above all that you'd prosper and be in health, right? I think it's 2 John. Even as your soul does prosper. 
you know, God wants your soul to prosper more than he wants you to get, see, yeah, get a new swimming pool. Right? Uh, <laughs> um, you know, when you, th when you see the, the sweeping across the land and sweeping across the landscape of the body of Christ, Christian nationalism, um, these things will lead you in the wrong direction. You know, Christian nationalism could lead you, lead you to be, be patriotic towards something you shouldn't be patriotic towards. Right? Yes, we're, we're good citizens of the United States of America. <laughs> Police don't have to worry about us. We don't rob stores, you know. We, we don't harm anyone, you know. We're harmless as doves. But that doesn't mean we're not wise as serpents. That doesn't mean we're doormats. And in the body of Christ, we have to be careful about error such as Christian nationalism or Christian Zionism. See, right now in the body of Christ, it's real popular to, and, it, and we were taught this way too. So, you know, again, we're not throwing stones. We're just correcting error because we had to correct the error in our life too. That, oh, you know, uh, Israel is the, the, the pupil of God's eye, the apple of God's eye, you know. Well, you know what? That was written in the Old Testament. And, and you know what? If you have not the Son, you have not the Father. Right? Does Israel have the Son as a nation? No, they don't. So what? They have not the Father. And it says, uh, it, it says uh, 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 in reference to the gospel... They're enemies of God. And yet the body of Christ supports Israel like they can do no wrong. That they can, they can do all this wrong and God just goes, oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pardoning all that because of Abraham. No, there's not a different set of rules for them. And No, we're all one in Christ Jesus. Or you're not. And you see what's going on over there now. And you have huge se segments of the body of Christ that are supporting Israel no matter what. No matter what. And actually Israel, and, and it's, it's not even the people of Israel. It's the people running the country over there. And the Jews actually in America that are manipulating our government leaders, you know, money under the table and all this kind of thing, and they're getting favors and they, they are getting billions and billions of dollars for Israel to really bring genocide on their neighbors. And they've had like 75 years to work things out with their neighbors and the end result has been just bomb them in, into oblivion. And you know, some of those neighbors over there, the Palestinians, they're Christians. And, and our media mind controls the American people into Israel good, Palestinians bad. Well, you know what? It's not that simple. Now see, that's called Christian Zionism. Isn't it? Yes. Yes. Christian Zionism. Okay, when we bring this out to correct the body of Christ and go, now, wait a minute, wait a minute, you know, is that right? Is that righteous? Is that justice? Is, does that have any of the fingerprints of God on it? It does not. You know, Jesus said, I come to you, have my, might you that you might have life and have it more abundantly. But this thief, he comes only in order that he might steal, kill, and destroy. Well, what kind of fingerprints you seeing? Right? Okay, so what's my point? The point being is, look at uh, Habakkuk chapter 1. I want to show you where this can go. And 
if it goes that way, you should not be caught in it. You know, when he, you know, in that parable of the tares and the wheat, the wheat and the tares, or the darnel, whatever, uh, you know, he tells them, hey, should I root these up? And he says, no, in rooting up the, the wild wheat, you might root up some of the good wheat. You know, leave it to the end. And the, the reapers, the angels will come in and they'll reap the harvest. See, it's harvest time. And you don't want to be uh, on the wrong side of this. Um, uh, Habakkuk 1.13, he says, God, you're, you're of purer eyes than to behold evil and cannot look upon injustice. Why do you look upon the plunderer? Why are you silent when the wicked one destroys him who is more righteous than he is? Why do you make men like fish of the sea like reptiles and creeping things that have no ruler. Uh, the Chaldean brings them all up with his hook. He catches and drags them out with his net. He gathers them in his drag net. Now, here's the point I want to make about that. Things like what I'm talking about, the prosperity message, hyper grace, Christian national, Christian Zionism, these are a net. They're not just a hook. They're not just getting one at a time. They're dragging a net and taking big groups of people in the wrong direction. They're capturing them. Okay? And the reason we bring it out and say, hey, wait a minute. Actually, that's got a lot of leaven in it, and that's not right teaching. Um... You're going the wrong way. You, and, and see, a lot of times um, it's going to be a charismatic uh, type A leader or group of leader or organizations that drag a lot of people with it because the people don't think for themselves. They go along with the crowd they go with the majority of people. And I'm going to tell you something. If, if, if you're going to find the straight and narrow way, S-T-R-A-I-T, if you're going to find that straight where the truth is, you better be prepared to stand alone. You better be prepared to be like John the Baptist or Elijah. Because it won't be where the crowd is. It won't. Satan knows how to drag them up with his dragnet. If you see large groups of people that are following some movement, uh, start, start studying that movement. Find out what is it they're trying to say here and figure out for, for your own self. And you can do it. Figure it out, is that really right? The clue is there's a lot of people. If you see a lot of people in a movement like the ones I'm talking about, it's probably wrong. Yeah, the broad, the, yeah. but broad is the way that leads away to destruction and many are those who go in there, right? It doesn't say they're going to hell. It says they're going to destruction. And this is what we're trying to keep people out of, out of destruction. See, God wants to save us to the uttermost, to, to the very end. And he wants to transform us. But when you lay hold of something that has leaven in it, which usually puffs you up, because that's what leaven does to bread, it puffs it up, it, it, it appeals to your pride. Um, and, you know, it could be a pride that you're, you're, a, you're proud to be a part of a big movement. Mm -hmm. See, that's so easy to do. You know, that's my team. Mm -hmm. And your team could be wrong and go in the wrong direction. 
you know, it, it said that the serpent was more subtle. He was crafty. He's a, he's a wily. He knows how to trick large groups of people as well as individuals. He knows how to do that. And we, as people in the body of Christ, we have to point these things out. We're not against them. We're for them. We're just not for the error. If, if you embrace the error and you go that direction, you could be a part of the broad way that leads to destruction. You're going to heaven. You have Jesus. He's your Savior. You're saved by the blood of the Lamb, but you could die in a movement that God doesn't agree with. You see what I'm saying? He gathers them with his dragnet, so he rejoices and is in high spirits. Therefore he sacrifices to a net and burns incense to his dragnet because from them he lives luxuriously and his food is plentiful and rich. You know, Satan, it says that uh, by the abundance of his commerce, we see when he ruled the world before, before humans were here, before Adam and Eve, uh, he, he corrupted himself through commerce. Well, the way Satan does it now is he does commerce through human beings. I mean, what you're seeing, the whole fiat currency and the whole, the whole Babylonian world um, system. Yeah, system is, is all, has all the fingerprints of Satan on it. That's the way he was before when he ruled. Now he's usurped the dominion and he operates through human beings. And it has his fingerprints all over it. And his, his people, the ones that he gets to do his bidding, they're the rich men of the earth. You know, over there in Revelation 18, what does it say? The rich men... And the businessmen and the rulers of the earth, right? See, they're the ones running this big show. I mean, when they can scam the whole earth into telling you how the climate is changing so bad that, you know, we're going to have to charge tax for this. You know, we're going we're gonna to have to start making electric vehicles and, and instead of uh, gasoline-powered vehicles. I mean, Wow. And people fall for this stuff. It's all propaganda. You know what propaganda is? It's lies. It's lies to get what they want. Shall therefore, he therefore um, continue to empty his net and mercilessly go on slaying the nations forever? See, that's what he's doing. That was verse 17. The last verse there. I mean, you know, like we were saying earlier, you're looking at all these ways that the American people have been manipulated over the last hundred years through the banking, through pharmacy, through uh, food. Um, I mean, you name it, through, through the media, through entertainment, um, to the point where really the American people, they lost their country. We lost the country. The American, the American people, it's like a different nation from the, the, the people who are actually in control of everything. I sure hope God judges us that way and he doesn't lump us all into the same lump. That would be terrible. But I think that's what the, the, the plucking of the wings of the lion are. Is God? That's God's judgment, and it's righteous. And if God plucks the wings, the thing that's causing this nation to fly in what direction? Um, if He plucks those wings, that'll be merciful to the American people. Because if He doesn't, 
I think America is, is doomed to pass away. It, it won't survive what they have planned. I mean, you've, you've all looked into artificial intelligence and, and where that's heading in, in not a very far distant. I mean, we're talking months and years. We're not talking decades away. Hmm. <laughs> we'll do, let's go on reading in verse, chapter 2. Habakkuk says, I will, I will stand upon the po my post of observation and station myself on the tower of the fortress and will watch to see what God will say within me and what answer I will make to the perplexities of my complaint against him. <laughs> and the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and engrave it so plainly upon tablets that everyone who passes may be able to read it easily and quickly as he hastens by. And boy, are we hastening by. Mm -hmm. You talk about a fast-paced world. Yeah. <laughs> you ever go through your internet pages? Hours click by. Just boom. Wow. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, and it hastens to the end. It will not deceive or disappoint. And though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not be behindhand on its appointed day. Well, what are we talking about here? What vision? Well, the vision he's talking about. The vision of the end times that we live in today. Yeah, there was a time for them in the time of Habakkuk, but this is prophetic. And see, this is the vision. We, we wrote it down so when you hasten by, you can take a look at it and go, well, now what? Well, what's going to happen? You know, when you start trying to juggle in your mind seals and trumpets and bowls and this and that and horses and and, uh, you know, lions and bears and leopards, oh my. You know, when you try to juggle that all in your head, that's a difficult thing to do. It's like juggling numbers in your head. It's like trying to figure out your checkbook, when that, you know, in your head. <laughs> or if you write it down, then you can see it clearly as you hasten by. Because we are a fast-paced society and everyone's in a hurry. Uh, but I tell you this, uh, that, that's one thing you should so, slow down and, and spend your life looking at. Uh, you can't go wrong with it. You can't go wrong with studying the Bible. I mean, if there's anything you do in life, make it your endeavor to do that. Uh, become a scholar of the, of the Word of God. Because the Word of God is eternal. And it's spiritual. What, whatever you read in there... It can edify you. you. You just flip it open in the morning and read one verse and just, oh, wow. I mean, one verse. That's God's Word. You know, I used to, I used to make New Year's resolutions and go, I'm going to read the Bible for one hour every day before I go to work. And that went for two or three days. Because that ain't the way to do it. <laughs> And I would read, oh, I would read as much as I could read in one hour. That's not reading the Bible. <laughs> no, just, just the way I did it was, you know what? I'm going to read for a couple minutes. And then, see, I read for comprehension. I read to get understanding. And then I take that one verse or two verses, and I go all day on it. See, that, that's, we want to read so that we can be edified and take it with us. And we've got to do that. We have to. Otherwise, we too will be deceived. And, you know, that is the big deal in the last days. I mean, great Jesus... 
they, they asked Jesus, what, what's going to be the sign? Look, look at that in Matthew 24. Jesus departed from the temple area and was going on his way when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to the buildings of the temple and point them out to him. But he answered them, Do you see all these? Truly I tell you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And while he was seated on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us, when will this take place and what will be the sign of, of your coming and of the end of the age? Yeah, three questions. And Jesus answered them, Be careful that no one misleads you, deceiving you and leading you into error. See, that's the first thing he told them. Why? <laughs> well, uh, verse 10, And then many will be offended and repelled and will begin to distrust and desert, desert him whom they ought to trust and obey and will stumble and fall away and betray one another and pursue one another with hatred. And many false prophets will rise up and deceive and lead many into error. You know, when he says straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads away to life and few there be that find it. If you're going to find it, you got to go looking for it. You can't wait for somebody to tell you. Don't wait for somebody to tell you. I'm not saying don't listen to people, but Jesus said the measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear. See, you got to give your thought and study to it because that guy may be wrong. I may be wrong. He may be wrong. Right? We could be. We're trying our best not to be, but we could be. And this is why we talk often to one another, so that we can make sure. I mean, he and I check each other all the time. I check myself with uh, Tammy all the time. I check myself with Lamont. Lamont's got a lot of word in him. I can call him up and talk to him and Oh, the Holy Spirit will show up on the scene, like right between us. Right, Lamont? It's happened many times. Same with me and Ray. Happens all the time. Why? Why? Because we got to get this thing right. Because many false prophets rise up and they, and we think, well, they're not false prophets. You know, we love these people. You know, we, we, we've seen them on TV for ages. Just because they're false prophets doesn't mean they don't belong to Jesus. They could be a part of the body of Christ. It's what are they saying? Right? If it's wrong, it's wrong. And, it's, and they will lead many into error. Well, why would Jesus say that if that wasn't a danger. Being led into error, that's a danger. Well, why? What would happen? Uh, you could die. You could be led astray. Yeah. Just saying. Verse 24, for many false Christs and false prophets, for false Christ and false prophets will rise and they will show great signs and wonders so as deceive and lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Wow. Well, how come it's not possible? Well, it's possible not to be led astray. It is a possibility. But... If you're not going to be led astray, it was because you set yourself not to be led astray. 
It isn't because you casually went along with the crowd. You have to set yourself not to be led astray. And you, you will probably be criticized by just about everybody. In Luke 21, it says, you'll be hated by every, everyone for my name's sake. Wow. That's a great deal, Lord. Well, it is a good deal. If you're loved by God, what do you care? I mean, that's who we're trying to please here, God. Not, we're not trying to be man pleasers, right? Great signs and wonders. See, I warned you beforehand, Jesus said. He said, I warned you. Hmm. Well, this is what we do all the time. And we're just trying to say, hey, body of Christ, we don't hate you. We love you. But we're willing to say, hey, if it's wrong, it's wrong. And, and, it, and I think if you're wise, you'll reason with us. And we can reason with you. If you're not wise, you're not going to reason with us. And you may suffer the consequences of it. Or somebody else will come along and eventually you get it. I'm not saying that's not possible. It is. I mean, it does say God is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish. I mean, he does say perish. Think, think of all the movements that have been in the, in the world, even in the United States of America, where large groups of the population were sold propaganda, and they believed it. And the nation went that direction. I mean, especially in our in these last two or three generations. The hippie movement, the drug movement, the Vietnam War, the Middle East Wars. Pharmaceuticals, the medical industry. I mean, you, you can you, we could go, we talk about it all night long. We could. Uh, you know, I talk about um, the man Edward Bernays, uh, who, who they used in World War I to sway the American population to get into World War I because America did not want to go into that war. And he swayed the American people through propaganda or public relations, you know, they, they used the word propaganda to begin with, but he said, you know, that, that word, you know, everybody's on to us, so we, we better call it public relations now. And now there are public relations firms everywhere. That's how corporations survive, through public relations firms. They put out a product that they know this... Look, the bottom line is for us, it's not the best product for the American people. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about baby powder. Mm -hmm. Wow, how much cancer did that bring upon people? Mm -hmm. Right? Baby powder. I mean, we grew up with that stuff. Mm -hmm. Your mother, you know, dabbing you with that stuff. And it's full of talc. And it causes cancer and, and uterine cancer and so many women. But public relation firms, you know, and, and commercials. See, and this is, this is how everything is run now. And the American people are basically like lab rats. See? And this propaganda is deception you know uh, Edward Bernays um, the way they got women to start smoking cigarettes in the 1920s was they did a little propaganda stunt and they got all these women in New York City to to pray down you know Fifth, Fifth Avenue or Broadway or whatever 
smoking cigarettes. And they, they equated smoking cigarettes for women with uh, women's liberation. Okay? Did it work? Yeah. It worked. Uh, he, he did public relations for Dixie to have paper Dixie cups in everyone's bathroom telling everybody it's unsanitary to use a glass. Well, is it unsanitary to use a glass? No. Saying so, you think, well, that's, you know, that's a minor thing. It is, but it was a lie. That's public relations. And if you read the life of Edward Bernays, and like I said, now there's hundreds if not thousands of public relations firms that they just run the world. And we're oblivious to it. We don't know how, I mean, Washington, D.C. is full of them. We don't know how thoroughly we're being manipulated. I mean, my brother watches Fox News, so, you know, he's over at our house, and we're watching Fox News the last couple of days, and I'm just looking at it going, wow. Now, I, I, now I remember why I don't watch this. And, and the others are worse. They're, they're the best of them, and they're bad. You know, it's all about just manipulation, confusion, um, just polarization. I mean, it, it's just all they do, 24-7. I was like, wow, I, I now remember why I quit watching all this years ago. Because I like to make up my own mind. I don't need some expert to tell me. Weren't we talking about that earlier? Yeah. Now there's experts everywhere. <laughs> like we don't know how to think. See, but we do know how to think. We have the truth revealer, the Holy Spirit living in us, and we can think. But you have to do it. You can do it, if you will do it. And the more you do it, the better at it you get. Just like anything else. Right? Look at 2 Timothy 4. Again, the reason I'm bringing this up is we don't want to come across as just, he's just negative. Oh, he causes division. In the, no, no. If you're, okay, look. If you're bringing out truth against error, I guess that is division. Mm -hmm. Actually, it is. It divides truth from error. <laughs> yeah, Jesus said, you, you think... I've come to bring peace on the earth? No. I've come to bring a, a sword, right? To, to divide asunder. That's what his word does. It divides truth from error. And he says, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. It can be just a little, but it might be a little here, but when you get down the road, it's a whole lot. You see? But in 2 Timothy 4, Verse 2, he says, Herald and preach the word. Keep your sense of urgency. Whether the opportunity seems to be favorable or unfavorable. I think when people listen to me, it sounds unfavorable. <laughs> but look, again, we're trying to keep the body of Christ out of a trap, out of a net. There's a whole internet out there that's trying to sweep you in, right? We're not against them. We're against the error. We're against lies because what it will do to you. Convince them, rebuking and correcting, warning and urging, encouraging them. See, when you're correcting and rebuking and warning People, oh, you're negative. 
That's my job. He says it right there. That's our job. If we don't do that, then we're letting the body of Christ go off into error and be destroyed. Is that love? <laughs> and also encouraging them, being unflagging and inexhaustible in patience and teaching. And let me tell you, it does take patience because it doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. you, you can't turn a, a big old battleship on a dime. It takes many miles to turn one of those things around. The body of Christ is a big place, if you hadn't noticed. For the time is coming where people will not tolerate sound and wholesome instruction, but have having ears itching for something pleasing and gratifying, they will gather to themselves one teacher after another to a considerable number chosen to satisfy their own liking and to foster the errors they hold. See? See how that works? You know, when you're when you're teaching something that's tickling the ears, it's pleasing and satisfying, your flesh is the one that's being gratified. That stuff sells. You know? And they will turn aside from hearing the truth and wander off and wander off into myths and man-made fictions. See? It's happening all the time in the body of Christ. I mean, it's just... Yeah, YouTube is loaded with it. You know, he's saying many false prophets are coming. They'll lead many into error. Jesus wasn't... He didn't mince any words about that. He said, oh, there'll be a moderate amount and moderately people will fall away. Some people will fall away. About half the people... No, many pro false prophets, many led into error. See, and he's prophesying about the end times. See, look on, over the page at 2 Timothy 3, uh, verse 6. For among them, these people who uh, have a form of godliness but deny the power. You know where the power is? The power is in the truth. That's where the power is. <laughs> Among them are those who worm their way into homes like through the screens. <laughs> it used to be television screens. Yeah. It still is, but yeah. now it's, it's uh, computer screens and telephone screens. And they worm their way in. Right? Oh, man, I could name some names, but I won't. Oh, man. Worm their way into homes and captivate silly, weak-natured, spiritually dwarfs. Uh, what is that word in the Greek? Something gyne? Gynaria. Little yeah, girls. little girls. That's, that's how he describes people who will not think for themselves and stand up. See, he... The woman brings forth a man-child. The man-child means stronger as for lifting. Well, what's he doing? He's thinking for himself. He's strong in the Word. He's strong in his communion with God. You know, that's, that's why the man-child gets caught up. Because he's strong. He isn't a little girl. You know, he didn't just flit off down the trail after anything. You know, they're, they're, he, they're not little immature little girls. That's the way he's describing these people who worm their way into your home and get you all titillated with their latest Christian fad. How many fads have we seen over the last 40 years? 
Wow. These little girls, mm, spiritually dwarfed little girls, loaded down with sin, swayed and led away by various evil desires and seductive impulses. You know, seductive impulses doesn't have to be sexual. It can be religious. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It can sound real spiritual. But see, Satan's seducing them. These little girls will listen to anybody who will teach them. They are forever inquiring and getting information. Wow, how many times have we seen that? Huh? But are never able to arrive at a recognition and knowledge of the truth. Wow. This is, this is the world we live in. This is the world the body of Christ is in in the last days. And when we deal with error in the body of Christ, what does it say? Uh, rebuking, correcting, warning, urging. That, that right there, instead of uh, being titillated, those are bad words to these people. I don't like him. Yeah. See, those are those are ugly words. Rebuking? How dare you rebuke me? <laughs> wow. We're trying to save you. See, we're not just being negative, or we're not just being. Uh, you know, maybe you read it as. Oh, uh, you know, he's just any, against anybody that doesn't think his way. Or he's just against anybody that's, that their churches are actually successful in making a lot of money. As if making a lot of money is the proof of your spiritual success. Or even getting a lot of people saved. Is that really proof Wow. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean. They can be saved but spiritually immature. Yeah, they can be saved but spiritually immature. Right, exactly. Yes. That, see, that gets you killed. God doesn't want you to get killed. God doesn't even want you to die. Yeah. Even physically. Oh, now, now you are Tarkin heresy. No, I'm talking the Bible. <laughs> that you never die at all. Do you believe this? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, Lord, we believe in the resurrection. Well, look at this. Look at Philippians chapter 3. Because it will take something to bring that about. And look, none of us deserve it. We're not talking about what we deserve. We're talking about what Jesus paid for. See, when Jesus died on the cross, he paid not just for you not to go to hell. He paid for everything for you. What Jesus did on, in his life and ministry and his going to the cross and dying, it paid for you to have the opportunity to become like him. Now that is deep, but the truth of the matter is, that is the truth. And hardly anyone wants to lay hold of that because they think, well, that's impossible. <laughs> but with God, all things are possible. Right? Look at Philippians 3, verse 10. For Paul says, My determined purpose is that I may know him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and clearly, that I may in the same way come to know the power outflowing from his resurrection 
resurrection. That I may so share his sufferings as to be continually transformed to his death in the hope that if possible, I may attain to the resurrection that lifts me out from among the dead, even while in the body. But see, you have to know him to, to be able to attain to that. If you believe error, you're not knowing him. You're believing a lie. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Right? If you believe error, that's not knowing him. That's knowing error. That's knowing a lie. But see, if you're going to attain to the resurrection that lifts you out from, from among the dead, even while in the body, you know, everybody wants to talk about the rapture. But when you start talking about them, what it takes to be a part of the rapture or the harpezo to be snatched away, then you're going to have to know him and you're going to have to know him accurately. So why is that wrong for us to warn people if they're going into error? It's not wrong, not even to rebuke them. You know, remember, Jesus said in Matthew 24, they were going to show signs and wonders. Think about that. There's a lot of people that get moved by signs. We used to do it. Be moved by signs and wonders. Well, signs and wonders, wow. Have we not seen signs and wonders among this group in the last 45 plus years? We saw a lot of signs and wonders in the day. A lot of them. We saw a lot of manifestations of demons too. We saw a lot of signs and wonders. And, and there are big movements, especially among the new apostolic reformation that they're all into signs and wonders. And he's saying that these false apostles, mm -hmm. false prophets would bring signs and wonders so as to deceive even the elect. Right? That's why you have to go with what the Word says. You have to go with the Word. They're leading, away. They're leading them away from the Word. Away from I mean, some signs and wonders, eh, they're not so hard to detect that they're not of God, like walking around clucking like a chicken. <laughs> Or crawling around barking like a dog. A lot of of, who does that? There's people who do that. Yeah. In the body of Christ. And they think that's deep. Well, it's deep. Yeah. It, it's deep doo-doo is what it is. It's a bunch of baloney is what it is. And they're being led by not too swift people. Not the sharpest knives in the drawer. I mean, really. But see, those are kind of easy to see. You know, what if you start seeing manifestations that you... Uh, wow, is that you, God? Or is that something else? You got to have a good discerner. Yeah. See, but, but, see... He's saying, if you are going to attain to the resurrection that lifts you out from among the dead in the body, that you have to intimately know Him. Intimately. See, that's important. He, he, what is he? Not that I have attained this or have already been made perfect. See? But I press on to lay hold of and grasp and make my own that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me and made me his own. And I do not consider, brethren, that I've captured and made it my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to, lie, to what lies ahead, 
I press on toward the goal to win the supreme prize to which God in Christ Jesus is calling us upward. So let those who are spiritually mature and full grown have this in mind and hold these convictions. And if in any respect you have a different attitude of mind, God will make that clear to you. Only let us hold true to what we have already attained and walk and order our lives by that. See? Look, we've all made mistakes. All of us. Every single one of us. We've all made mistakes. We've all condemned ourselves from time to time. We have. We've all felt like giving up from time to time. We've all told God from time to time, I think you got, you made a mistake, God. You got the wrong person. Well, I would, I would encourage you. God he did not make a mistake with you. Not anyone here and not anyone that, yeah, who we're ministering to out there in YouTube land. He did not make a mistake with you. God is not willing that any should perish. Any. And God is no respecter of persons. What Jesus did, what he accomplished on the cross is for you to lay hold of. And hey, just forget what lies behind. Don't let the devil use that as a hammer on you. Just tell him to get out. You know, God's mercies are new every morning. Jesus' blood continually cleanses us. That doesn't mean we presume, you know, but look, if you failed, you failed. Well, you're still breathing, you're still alive. The game's not over. You know, we still have a chance. Yeah, but I just keep doing the same. You know what? You'll get tired of it one of these days. You're just going to get tired of just making the stupid mistakes over and over again. Don't you? And then you're just going to go, you know what? I think, I, I think I'm just going to grow up. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I think I'll just grow up instead of just keep going through this because... If I keep doing it, I'm going to get the same results. Now that is insanity, inspecting, expecting different results, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, if I just keep doing this, I'm just going to get the same old results and I'm going to be in the same dumps. And it gets even worse because you're thinking, wow, man, how many years are you going to go through this? And then eventually you just go, you know what, I'm just going to give that up. I'm going to quit doing that. And then you'll make it a habit in your life and then it'll become part of your character and then you will have been transformed. See? It's not impossible. That's how it works. And you think, well, I'm too old. No, you're not. You're never too old. Never. I say you're never too old. Never. If you take that attitude, you know, you're going to start to believe that. Well, quit believing that. You're not too old to learn something new. You know, they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, you ain't no dog. <laughs> you, you are a son of God. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. And we're just beginning. This is just the beginning. You know, what God is bringing forth on the earth is so absolutely amazing. Yeah, the leaders of the uh, and rules of the earth, yeah, they're doomed to pass away. Satan's going into the abyss. God's going to remove that stuff from the earth. But, you know, that's them. They're, they're outside of the covenant. Right? I mean, those leaders and rulers of the earth, the human ones, they could get in covenant with Jesus. They still have time. But at this point, they're outside of covenant. God's dealing with his body. And what he wants to do with his body is he wants to give the earth back to him. He wants to give the dominion back to him, but it's after he returns. 
dominionism, we're, God hasn't called us to fix Babylon. Dominionism is a bunch of gobbledygook. He has not called, caused the body of Christ to take the seven mountains of culture. Now he said, come out from among them that you might not share in her sins and don't participate in their plagues. That's what he said. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. Look at that, Revelation 18. I don't have my, my timekeeper here, so I don't know how we're much time we got. Yeah, we're getting down to it. You know, Revelation 18, where he's talking about Babylon has fallen. <laughs> and all those, those corruptors of the earth, they stand a long way off. You know, they stand a long way. They're crying. Well... They, they should be crying because they chose the wrong thing. And in verse 23, Never again shall the light of the lamp shine in you, Babylon, and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall never be heard in you again. For your businessmen were the great and prominent men of the earth. And by your magic spells and poisonous charms, right? All nations were led astray, seduced and deluded by your what is it? sorceries, it says in the King James, and the word is pharmacia. by your pharmacia. By your pharmacia, all nations were led astray, seduced and deluded. By your pharmacia. All nations. Tell me when that, before now, was that possible? Not before now. This is the first time this has been possible for all nations to be led astray, seduced and deluded by pharmacia. You think they're just going to go away? They're just going to give up their cash cow? I doubt it. So Father, we ask that you help us not to be seduced and deluded and led astray. Help us to get all the leaven out of our life that we can be... Uh, those vessels that you called us to be without error. And help us, Father, to continue to love the body of Christ and to pray for them and to lift them up. And Father, we ask that you, that you get this message out to people that they can be delivered from all the confusion that's coming at them and that you will raise up people good men who will study the word and get the accurate knowledge that people can truly be edified from it and they, they can be transformed by it. We ask it in Jesus' name.